from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's coverage. We're covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience 2020. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Great online experience, check it out. A lot of content, go poke around. A lot of CUBE interviews, a lot of content from HPE. It's their virtual conference, HPE Discover Virtual Experience. We have a CUBE alumni, Justin Hotard, who's now SVP and general manager of HPE Japan. Justin, great to see you uh, virtually uh, here for the virtual experience. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well, John. Great to see you again uh, as well, and uh, really, really glad to be here. You know, just reminiscing about our previous interview, we've done a couple times. I know Jeff Frigg has interviewed, I've interviewed you at HP Discover a couple years ago. Um, service provider, Edge now is booming. Everyone's working at home. Everyone is seeing the global pandemic play out on a global stage and impacting our lives. But anyone in the, in the IT business or technology business is seeing the massive gaps and the areas that need to be worked on. This is something that we're going to dig into because I think this is a really interesting conversation as someone who's in Japan, obviously big telco presence, but obviously part of the global stage. So I want to get into that. But before we do, um, tell us about your new role at HPE. What are you working on and what are you doing? Yeah, so, um, so John, currently I'm the uh, president of HPE Japan. I'm responsible as the managing director of Japan and then also uh, the managing, uh, managing director of our business in China as well. So, uh, so keeping myself busy these days. APAC, you're on a lot of Zoom calls, conference calls. I can imagine the work you're doing. Um, pretty big disruptions. I want to get your thoughts as an industry uh, participant and who's seen these ways before. What are some of the disruptions that you're seeing right now? Obviously, they're well documented in terms of you know vi more video, um, VPNs under provision. <laughs> Where are you yep. seeing the big disruptions? Because those are the obvious low hanging fruit, but it's certainly being an impact. The disruptions are creating opportunities, but major challenges right now. What's your thoughts? You know, I think, I think specific in, uh, you know, John, and, and what we're seeing in Japan in particular is, um, you know, this is really a big inflection point in terms of how people work. And as you, as you know, when you think about, a, you know, Japan, the, the culture and the economy has been very reliant on face-to-face um, -face and rela you know, relationship driven. It's also, um, there's been some traditional paper-based activity in that space as well, I mean, things like the Honko stamp, the way you sign documents um, to get, uh, you know, not just for government approval, but even in private transactions. And so all of that is is actually uh, under, you know, a great wave of change. And, and so the obvious part is we talk about virtualization and VDI, but it's really forcing people to rethink, um, you know, workflows. And, and it's not, you know, it's not just one thing generally, it's across many, many vertical markets, education, manufacturing, um, obviously, uh, obviously traditional enterprise. We touched on Zoom and, and other, you know, virtualization and BDI, but but it's it's I think it's coming to you know across all industries right now, uh, based on this, this change. What's going on in Japan specifically? I know that some GDP numbers were coming in pre-COVID. Obviously, when COVID hits, given some of the things you were just talking about, how they do business, the culture there must be impacted by the COVID nineteen. What are you what are you seeing there and um, what, how, do, how do they move forward? I mean, what are some of the changes that need to happen? What are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as you, as you touched on, I think the, the economy there was already under pressure. Um, then you have COVID hit. Um, you know, Japan has a huge, uh, has had a huge tourism business booming, you know, based on the growth in Asia and obviously particularly in China. Um, all of that gets hit and, uh, uh, and, and then obviously, um, you know, this traditional way of doing business has been challenged over the past few months, but I think it's, it's actually creating quite a bit of opportunity. And, and some of it is, some of it is similar to what you see in, you know, other parts of the world, but, you know, we've seen um, many of the Japanese companies in medical devices and pharmaceuticals jump into innovation. I know everything from um, masks to, um, you know, investment in, uh, uh, you know, in virology and other, and, and uh, you know, in other areas and, and testing and all the things that you're seeing. But, but I think beyond that, what we're also seeing is a lot, you know, a lot more discussion around innovation. Um, one place that we're seeing it, you know, immediately is education. Um, there's a huge initiative around um, connecting uh, schools, primary schools, grade schools, and bringing 
uh, IT technology uh, into those schools as a way uh, to accelerate the learning experience. And I think obviously in this, uh, in this new world, in the short term, help manage uh, and, and you know, ensure continuity of learning through, you know, through social distancing and some of the challenges that, that everybody has you know, in, in, uh, in primary education. It's interesting, you know, those traditional things, like you mentioned, just signatures, converting that to digital e-signatures, uh, the stamping thing you mentioned, also the the face-to-face -face with education, every vertical up is going to be disrupted and it's an opportunity. So that's what you guys see. And I see transformation is part of that. What are some of the uh, patterns you see emerging so that your customers and prospects can capture it? What are some of the highlights? What's the big picture? Yeah, I think uh, I think at a high level we talk a lot about digital transformation and, and remote work. Uh, these, by the way, were discussed before COVID hit, so I think it's it's just an acceleration. The other one is really around edge and IoT. Um, you know, J Japan obviously great tradition of manufacturing. Um, this actually is going to probably create new investment around manufacturing as Japan looks to build its manufacturing base. It's part of what we expect from the government in terms of the stimulus programs that they're. Um, that they're investing in. Um, and I don't think the factory that'll be built tomorrow is going to, you know, is going to start off with a you know, traditional labor view. In fact, it's going to start very, you know, very organized against robotics, AI, using, uh, using IOT, using sensors to drive greater levels of automation. Um, you know, a lot of that exists today, but I think this, this event just creates, you know, more opportunity for an acceleration, particularly in Greenfield. So we're having, conversations with customers around all those areas right now. You know, one of the biggest observations I would say in my past 10 years, looking at the wave we've been on and, and looking at the massive wave coming in now is culture is always a, bit, a part of the blocker of adoption. Um, and you're kind of getting at some of this with, with the world you're in now, where the culture has to shift pretty radically fast, whether it's the remote workforce, the remote workplace, workloads, with the robotics and AI, um, everything work-related, workplace, workloads, workflows, <laughs> work, workforce. I mean, all's changing, right? So this is a critical cultural yeah. thing. Your thoughts on this, because this has to move faster. What are you seeing as catalysts? Any kind of uh, technology enablement? What's the, what's the, what's the data tell you? Yeah, yeah. I think I think a couple of things we're you know we're seeing. I think one that we're seeing that's a pivot that we've obviously seen in the rest of the world for a number of years now is a is a shift to consumption. And uh, we've seen that grow uh, from customers, right? So they're looking at how do they accelerate this experience? How do they stand it up? How do they get it running? And consumption as a service, you know, as a service models are, are, are becoming even more attractive. And so we're seeing new interest in that uh, as a way to, to build things, to scale things, to create flexibility for, for future growth. And it's not, you know, it's not just public cloud. It's it's public cloud and on-premise applications. Um, you know, it's integration into the virtualization stack, obviously with, um, you know, with players like um, uh, VMware and Nutanix and, and Red Hat. Uh, it's uh, you know with OpenShift and containers. It, it's it's bringing all of that, you know, bringing all of that scale and flexibility. And the other the other place, honestly, we're still seeing it is even in some of our traditional businesses. I mean, we had a a very large consumption model in a traditional transaction processing business. And for that customer, it was about creating the flexibility for growth. Um, and so I think we're, you know, I think we really are on the brink of a very different IT model uh, in, uh, you know, certainly in Japan to enable a lot of this innovation yeah. and to provide more, you know, more flexibility and more automation for um, you know, for uh, for the for the companies there and the businesses there. And I just want to just validate that by seeing the data that we're looking at and the interviews we've had, and even our internal conversation with our editorial and Cuban research teams is, is it's happening now and the change, you can't ignore it. I mean, you could ignore it in the past, oh, we're not ready for it, people, process, technology, the three pillars of transformation. Well, with COVID, and we just having, we're just having this debate with our team uh, this past month, where it's not so much an acceleration into the future, the future got pulled to today and people are now seeing it and saying, wow, I need to move because the consequences of not changing are obvious. It's not like a hypothetical. You're starting to see specific uh, use cases where the folks that underinvested or didn't make the right bets 
might be on the wrong side of history coming out of COVID. So to your point about growth is, is a really key point. This is what everyone's thinking about right now. So I got to ask you, what solutions do you guys have ready to help customers? Because right now, solutions walk be, are, are really all that matters. It walks the fine line between you know, making it and not making it. So having the right solutions is key. Yeah, and actually, you know, I think one of the things you mentioned, a you know, great example of what you're talking about in, in transformation, right? In, in the airline industry, um, you know, we're seeing that we're going to see this in, in Japan, right? This is a place where um, face to face service was con considered a premium experience, right? You go to kiosks and automation, but now I think we're going to see, you know, we're seeing already interest in complete end to end automation, right? Bag check, bag drop. And that stuff's been talked about for many years, but now it's an acceleration of the experience. And 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 the difference is going to be, you know, no longer is it going to be a premium to talk to someone. It's actually about speed. So that's a place where, you know, obviously that's a heavily impacted industry. But as we see it come back in Japan and probably throughout Asia, I think we're going to see a very different model. Um, and uh, and to your question on, uh, you know, to your question on technologies. What I see us doing is really kind of three pieces. I think you've got um, you've got solutions like VDI, where it's literally out of the box, and we've built it with partners, so that customers you know that are small, medium, or large that want something standard that they can just take and deploy quickly, we have a platform for. Also, things like SD WAN, you know, through our Aruba business, I mean, we're seeing significant growth there. Um, obviously, um, you know, mobile access, wireless access, another place where we're seeing demand just building on our core business and, and really seeing healthy growth. I mentioned education is one vertical, but we're seeing it in obviously in places like manufacturing and uh, and I'm expecting to see even more growth in enterprise there as as uh, as customer, you know, as, as many of our customers come back to the office and bring employees back in. And you can't you can't have a traditional um, you know, just density of desks, right? You've really got to think about how do people have mobility and have flexibility to maintain distancing and um, and even even kind of the in and out of office, right? How do I maintain that that work experience and the productivity, whether I'm in the office for a couple of days and out? So I think those are places where we're, we see the technology. Then we talk about consumption service, so the flexibility to consume it as a service, which in all of those solutions we have offers around. And then ultimately, even on top of that, our HPEFS, um, our financial services, giving customers flexibility and payment options, which for many people that are cash strapped, uh, solves a real challenge, right? We talk a lot about the technology, but the fundamental business challenge of saying, gosh, I want to invest today. I need to get my work my workforce up and productive with VDI, but um, so they can start generating revenue and cash flow, but but I don't have the cash flow to invest in that productivity. And so this becomes a place where, uh, you know, we're, we're just seeing a lot of traction with our customers where we can help them actually get that up and running, not, not create a huge cash flow outlay up front, and they can get productive and get back on their feet. And, right. and definitely in the mid market and the smaller businesses, we're seeing a lot of a lot of activity there. That's a huge point because right now more than ever, that need is there because of the financial hardships people are seeing and that's evident and well reported. Having that financial flexibility is um, primary. That's a key thing. Um, so that's great. So uh, uh, good to hear that. The second thing I want to ask you on the business side that's important is not just the financing it because you want to have that consumption buy as you go from a cloud technology like standpoint as a service, but now you've got the financial support check. Next step is ecosystem. What are you guys doing on the ecosystem side? If I'm trying to rebuild my business or have a growth strategy, check technology, check I'm going to get some business help on the finance side. Third is partners. What's the status there? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's I think there's a couple of things. One is there's obviously the global relationships we have, you know, close relationship with VMware, uh, you know, the Nutanix relationship, Red Hat, others that were, were standing up solutions. And some of the things I mentioned like VDI, literally packaged, you know, uh, out of the box experience with um, a complete turnkey solution, right? So, so our partners don't even have to, you know, don't have to optimize it. They can just, they can just deploy and enable their, um, their customers. I think the other place in Japan, it's, you know, what we didn't touch on it earlier, but one of the really important things in Japan is most of our customers um, depend on their vendors, depend on their partners to actually do a lot of their IT work. Uh, it's a little bit unique in Japan versus the rest of the world. And so this is a place too, where we're spending a lot of time uh, with our partners and you know, with our entire partner ecosystem to make sure they're ready. And uh, I was just actually in a conversation yesterday with a partner 
um, talking about the investments they're bring, they're they're putting in to really bring that that, that core innovation around um, you know around VDI and around uh, around SD WAN for as an example, um, and working with them to make sure that they've got all the tools they need from us so that what they can deliver into their um, into their ecosystem is very turnkey and easy. And I think um, I think that's really, really, really important. So it's not just the, you know, the global technology relationships that we talk about, but you know, certainly in Japan, it's also about, um, it's about stitching together um, that entire ecosystem that, you know, that allows the uh, the end customer to have a, have a turnkey experience and everybody that's involved in that delivery, um, you know, to have a to have a seamless experience to get these customers up and running. And it's great too, you guys had that foundational services, but also now with some great acquisitions, you got the cloud native experience across environments, and then the yeah. reality of the edge, obviously workforce and workplaces are changing, VDI, et cetera, but you got edge exploding. You guys also made a great, has been years of investments in edge. So with telco and Wi-Fi all kind of coming together, it kind of sets up for a nice kind of front end piece with the app development piece going on. You seeing that in Japan as well? Yeah, I think all, all of our major telcos there have, um, you know, have announced 5G projects, projects and, and launches. We've got a new, uh, you know, we've got a new entrant in the in the uh, in the telco space. And Rakuten uh, launched uh, just a couple months ago their 4G solution. But I think all of that is very favorable to driving greater levels of connectivity. And and I think you know it's a lot of times when we talk about 5G. We talk about kind of the next mobile hand. You know, we think about the next mobile device or handset, but it's also a lot of the private LTE and connectivity, and um, and I think we'll see that um, actually the the intersection of 5G and Wi-Fi in some cases. We're having conversations about, you know, are there opportunities in 5G and um, as the backhaul and actually using Wi-Fi in a smaller, medium-sized office or home. Yeah. And so there's a number of things like that that I think will be compelling and and um you know great great opportunities for growth because japan's an incredibly you know as you as you know john japan's an incredibly um, well connected society and and you know a lot of connectivity um but uh but i think this is also creating new demand i mean people weren't working at home all the time and you know we, we obviously you know see that in other countries where you know maybe media streaming and, and video conferencing weren't uh weren't in the plans when people got their uh you know their, their original internet service but I think in Japan that's even more so because this tradition of I go to the office and work, and I, you know, when I'm I'm home, I'm 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 relaxing. I mean, this is fundamentally under a huge shift right now, and so um, I think it's going to be a you know a, a real significant wave of growth and in, in 5G and in Wi-Fi um, as this this new edge, this new you know this new remote work experience, this new mobile work experience happens. In Japan. A lot of architecture to re rework a little bit, not radical, but certainly transformative in its benefits. A lot of exciting time, tough environment right now. A lot of people working hard, have to come out of it, but it is super exciting from a tech perspective, what it can enable, really appreciate it. Of course, we're here at the HP Discover Virtual Experience, bringing you the best content. So I have to ask you, what sessions um, do you think people should turn into for uh, the virtual experience? Well, you know, it's uh, of course the the one that I think everyone has to make, and I never like to miss is the is the keynote because that uh, obviously Antonio always gives us not only um, you know some of the great technologies and launches, but uh, but also really a vision right of, of where we see the industry going. So I think that one's foundational. Um, but we've got some great sessions on uh, um, you know on consumption and as a service um, that are actually set up for some of our customers and, and partners, uh, you know, in Japan and across Asia. And I think those will be really good discussions, you know, with, um, uh, you know, with folks like um, our CTO, Kumar Srikanthi and our um, our global general manager for Greenlight, Keith White. And so I'd encourage folks to tune in to, you know, tune in and really learn about as a service. Because I think, you know, a lot of times we talk about the cloud and we think about public cloud only. Um, and I think for certainly for many of my customers and partners in Japan, um, I think with everything we just talked about, the cloud is going to be an inevitable reality, but the cloud is an architecture, and that's where some of these new technologies and services that we're bringing out uh, will be uh, will be really, really valuable. Whether it's in storage or it's in you know compute and virtualization, um, you know enabling collaboration or uh, you know some of the things that we're we're doing right now, John, but um, you know via video uh, video conference, but uh, but also. Um, 
also even just in, in, in automating the data center and bringing, you know, bringing new levels of productivity back into some of the traditional data center um, as we as we need to do that in order to enable the new edge and, and some of these new applications around AI and machine learning that are going to be necessary to to uh, to support the growth of the economy. But you know, net net, I think this is going to be um, these are all things that are going to support growth and a recovery for Japan. So I think it's a great opportunity and you know, a discover for our customers and partners to learn what they can do to to help accelerate that and uh, and uh, and accelerate the recovery. Certainly, cloud has shown the the, the way. It's an operating model. It's not just public, it's on-premise, it's in edges, so it's not just multi-cloud either, it's multi-environment. This is where the market's going, so you guys are on the right track. Uh, Justin, I really appreciate you taking the time, but I want to ask the final question. I want you to complete the sentence for me as we end this out on our virtual experience. Our competitive advantage at HPE, HPE's competitive advantage to our clients is that we are blank. Our competitive advantage uh, is that we are the best partner at deeply understanding their needs and bringing them the right innovation and value that they need to deliver their business outcomes. And in this case, obviously recover and get back to growth. Chesson Hochard, Managing Director and President of HPE Japan. Great to see you. Uh, congratulations on your new role over there on Asia Pacific. Um, and thanks for checking in on the virtual experience. Thanks for, for, for coming in and good to see you again. Great, great to see you, John. Thanks again for uh, for uh, having time for me and uh, best of luck for a uh, successful Discover virtual experience. Awesome. Okay, I'm John Furrier here in theCUBE studios getting the remote interviews for this virtual experience for HP Discover. Thanks for watching. <laughs>